everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to configure a basic website on a Windows or a Linux machine. Now there are many many ways to do this but in my method I think it's the simplest for both platforms. It's very very simple and I'm just going to show you how you can set it up and also the basic support forwarding if you'd like to make it open to the world. So we're going to start with Windows just because Windows is the most mainly used operating system and most people might either be running Windows Server or Ubuntu Server so if you are using Ubuntu check out the Ubuntu Server section later but for Windows users who just want to run it on server or just want to you know have a little bit of fun then this is how you can set it up so go ahead and open up your browser because we need to download something and then once you've done that you need to go ahead and type in nginx download windows as I said there are many ways of doing it but this is just my preferred method go ahead and click on download nginx and then click on mainline version and then this one right here this will download a zip file to your computer and then you just want to go ahead and open up the zip file once you've done that go ahead and extract it wherever you like I'm going to put it on the desktop just for the sake of simplicity once you've extracted it go ahead and open up the folder then go ahead and run nginx.exe if you see something like this just press more info run anyway because windows is just weird like that and then check both boxes and then allow access windows firewall tends not to like hosting software such as nginx and Apache, so you might need to disable it entirely and for this to work and i will show you how to do so in case it doesn't work so what you need to go ahead and do is simply type firewall into your start menu or firewall as i typed and then go ahead and click on windows defender firewall once you're in here go ahead and click on turn windows defender firewall on or off just turn both of them off and then your defenders turned off now you might think this is unsafe or insecure but trust me it isn't windows defender firewall is just absolutely useless to be honest with you i'm gonna get a lot of hate for saying that but windows defender firewall basically just blocks connections you want to do and it's so easy to bypass for malicious people to do literally you can just bypassing using commands with command prompt or powershell so there's like not a whole lot of point in having it on you can keep it on if you want to and figure out how to do it with exceptions but i just think it's a nuisance to have on so i don't like having it on so i just disable it altogether i will link the pc security channels video on how stupid windows Defender firewall is because it is just absolutely pointless anyway once you disable windows firewall i recommend once you've done it just to relaunch nginx just to be safe i hate windows 11. so to do that just terminate the process and then reload it now you won't see anything pop up that's because it's a background running process so don't open it a ton of times you just need to double click it once and check if it's running in task manager and if it is running in task manager then you know it is working fine so it should either come up as one or two processes if it does you know it's running fine now to check it's running go back to your browser and just type in localhost. You should see something like this, welcome to nginx, and this is just to confirm that nginx is working. If you see this page, nginx web server is successfully installed and working. Further configuration is required. So this is just to confirm it is working completely fine. So all you gotta do now is go ahead and close down your browser or minimize it, and then head back to the nginx folder. Now, this is the fun part. This is where you put your own HTML files or your data files, onto your web server. In my case I'm going to make a different index file. Now the basics of web pages is the index file is whatever your customer visits. So say they went to localhost then this is the same as going to localhost slash index.html. It's the same site. Index.html is the main web page. So we're going to go ahead and edit the index.html file. I'm just going to do a notepad because notepad is for the pros. And then I'm just going to make it say something like I don't know um Welcome to my site. This is not a HTML writing guide, this is just a how to set it up. If you want to find out how to write in HTML, I might make another video or you can find someone else's video. But if you guys do want to see that, let me know in the comments and I will consider making one. And we've got to make sure we have proper capitalization for YouTube because that just makes sense. And now if we close this down, head back to our browser, refresh the page, you'll see my new site is in action. Now this is great if you want to only visit it on your same computer. So say we wanted to connect to this on another computer on the same network. Well, we don't really need to do much more except just type in the VM's local IP. So that's 192.168.0.31. If you need to find out your IP address on Windows for local use, go to your computer and then go to Ethernet and then or, or Wi-Fi and then you should see IPv4 address and then your local IP. 
I'll do it on my main PC just to prove to you it does work on anything. And as you can see, it's 192.168.0.17 on my main. So yeah, it's a very handy little trick you can find your local IP. So, once you have done this, you will see your site is working on other devices on the same network. As you can see, I can access this fine. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how you could host a file on your web server, because say you wanted a file for people to download, this is how you can make it work. So, say we head to the VM, and then we want to give someone access to be able to download, I don't know, the, uh, let's just say any desk, right? Say you want to be able for people to actually download any desk, we could either just paste it in here, to so say they went to the IP, and then any desk.exe, it will now download any desk onto my computer, right? Or you could make subdirectories, like you know when a site does some more directories and then any desk.exe you could do that now i'm just going to do just to make this a bit simpler i'm just going to do hello so this will be the link i have to go to to download any desk if i it is at the moment it won't do anything because we didn't set it up but no worries we can do that very very easily let's head back to our server pc and then make the folder we want it to be called so we're going to call it hello we're going to call it hello and then we're going to go ahead and drag the file into the folder going to drag the file into the folder and then you will see any desk in the hello folder. Now, if we try and do it again on the other PC, it will download it just like our last time. So that's how you can have subdirectories. You could also do this with files. So say we wanted to have the slash hello to have an index.html, we could do that. Now, if our user goes to the IP and then slash hello, it'll say yes. Pretty simple. That's the basics of structure on NGINX. It's pretty simplistic. I'm now going to show you how you could make it public to the world. So, this is very dependent on your network. If you have a different router to me, it will probably be very, very different. I use a different router because, um, obviously, I have an ISP router, so this will be different to you. But in my case, you go to your router's homepage. So, in my case, that is 192.168.01. Just sign as my router real quick. And then once you're in your router, you want to go ahead and find your port forwarding settings. So in my case, this will be in advanced settings, and then security, and then port forwarding. Now what this will do is it will allow you to configure port forwarding. The basics of port forwarding, right? You have a local IP, say in my case, 192.168.0.31. However, if I was to go to my public IP address, this would not display. That's because it's set up in a local situation. So you want to set it up to go to my public IP address. We could go ahead and create a new rule and then set it to the local IP. So in my case, this is dot three one. Then for these, just type in 80, 80, 80, 80, not 808, 80. For protocol, click on TCP and then make sure it's enabled. I'm not gonna do it because I currently have another HTTP server set up on my IP address and it will probably kick my, for the rest of my family offline for a bit. So I'm not gonna do it right now. I will show you that I have a web server active as you can see on uptime kuma this is something for another video i will make this video soon but this is basically another thing that hosts on my site as you can see this is on my public ip i'm not going to show this ip obviously for quite obvious reasons but this is on the public ip and if i was to go to the local ip address i'd get the same result except on the local ip address i'm actually signed in so let me just sign out to compare as you can see i get the exact same result no, no matter what ip i'm on so yeah that's the basics of setting it up on Windows. Now I'm going to show you how you can set up NGINX on an Ubuntu machine, and it's basically the same concept. Alright, so next up I'm going to show you how you can do it on an Ubuntu machine. Now this is pretty much the same for any Debian-based system, and probably a lot of other ones as well, it's just slightly different commands. But what you want to go ahead and do is open up your terminal, and if you're on Ubuntu server this does work too, and you want to go ahead and do a sudo apt update. Type in your password. Okay, once that's done, I recommend doing a sudo su just to make life a, a lot easier for you. And I'm just going to click the terminal to put this a bit cleaner. Now with root, I'm just going to type in apt install nginx and go ahead and press Y. Now nginx should be started. So if we go ahead and open up Firefox. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open up Firefox just to give this a test. And as you can see, nginx is started and is running fine on our Ubuntu machine. So we're now on localhost and you can see the same page as we saw on Windows. And now I'm going to show you how you can update this page to whatever you want it to be. So you need to go ahead and do a cd cd slash var slash www. Do an ls and you should see html. cd html ls. You should see 
index.nginxdebian.html. We're just going to go ahead and do an rm and then that file. And then we're going to go ahead and do nano index.html. This is going to be the root file. So when this user goes to the, the site, they will see this file first. So what you want to go ahead and do is write your HTML. So in this case, I'm just going to do uh, hello world, just for the example, because I did the proper one earlier. I'm going to go ahead and do yes. And now we just want to go ahead and restart the page and you will see our page in action. Hello world. You can also do the similar situation with file structure. So I'm going to go ahead and do a new directory. Make a directory called yes and cd into it. And then make a file called index.html. Go ahead and save it. And then go ahead and go to yes. And as you can see, it works. It's pretty similar for both of them, except on Linux, it's just a few commands rather than running it through a GUI. But you just gotta do it through the terminal and it's pretty easy. And yeah, that's all you really gotta do. I hope this video is helpful. You can do the port forwarding on Ubuntu as well. It'll be just the same situation. And just know if you are using virtual machines, make sure you set the adapter to bridged because then it will communicate directly with the router. All right, have a good one.